Emily, I'm, I did a vlog today on uh, on the difference between Premiere and Filmora, and you've okay. worked with Filmora, and what do you have to say about it? It sucks. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. The highlights of the news this Thursday. Traffic accidents. Run, 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 run. A Beaver County man is being held for murder. And more labor. that you guys are having a good day or a good afternoon or a great evening depending on when you're watching this video. For me it's a pretty pretty crappy afternoon. It's raining outside. It was sunny before for a little bit but now it's gloomy again. So yeah. Anyway um, I'm sure that you've all clicked on this video for the same reason and that reason is because today we are going to be comparing two very different editing softwares. A very expensive, professional grade, hard to use sometimes editor, and a very cheap, easy to learn uh, alternative. So let's get started. Got my, uh, my notes here. I've realized that in recent videos um, I've gone off on tangents and as a result sometimes what I'm saying doesn't come across the way I want it to be. A good example of this is the other day when I was talking about my GoPro right here. Um, you know, one minute I was talking about 4K, the next minute I was talking about high frame rates, the next minute I was talking about it being waterproof. So hopefully having some sort of, like, not script, these are just notes. I just I just did a, uh, a, a compare and contrast list on both of the softwares. That's, that's all I did, I promise. So hopefully this should give a little structure to this video, uh, because, I mean, what good is the video if you can't really follow along? Okay, softwares are going to be comparing today. Well, if you looked at the thumbnail, we're going to be comparing one Share Filmora and Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, these are two very different video editing softwares that you can get. One Share Filmora is a pretty much one-time buy. I know that there's a one-year a uh, payment thing that you can get, so you only have 365 days. But then there's a lifetime purchase option that's only at like 10 or 20 dollars more. And uh, and the reason why they do this is because Filmora knows that they are basically the uh, the bottom floor when it comes to video editing. There really isn't any lower you can go. Maybe maybe Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> um, but they know that no one's gonna really be using this for years and years and years, so they're like, hey, let's just capitalize on this and give them a one-year option for like $20. I don't know. That's that's pretty much why they do that. Now, Adobe Premiere, on the other hand, you have to pay every single month. Um, now, because I'm a student, I get a really good deal of $20 a month. But if I wasn't, I think it's like $60 or $70 a month. But here's the thing, with Wondershare, you pay once and it's very low. It's like, it's it's what you would pay a month for Premiere, really. Okay, so the one year subscription is about $40 and the lifetime license is about $59.99. So yeah, that's a one time buy pretty much for about the same price that you pay for uh, Premiere per month if you're not a student. That's it, that's all you get with, with Wondershare. You get Wondershare, Filmora, for one year or a lifetime, uh, that's it. However, here's the catch. Yes, you pay a lot of money per month for Adobe Premiere. However, you get the entire Adobe suite. You get Photoshop, you get Lightroom, you get Audition, you get all these great softwares that go beyond video. So if you want to do a podcast, you know, you have Audition. If you want to do photo editing, you got Lightroom. Uh, and Photoshop. With Wondershare, you buy once, but you only get video. You don't get photo, you don't get, you know, anything other than Wondershare for more. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you want to do more than video, maybe, maybe it's a little worth getting the Adobe suite and learning it because it is a professional software um, thing. 
Anyway, so that's the price. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't afford. Me personally, I'm a student. I pay $20 a month for the entire Adobe Suite. And I use it every day of my life, so it's worth it for me. But if you're just going to be making pretty basic videos every once in a while, you know, uh, just for fun, maybe Filmora is the, the perfect software for you because you're not going to be paying an arm and a leg every month for something that you're not using. <sighs> Alright, let's move on to, uh, yes, how easy is it to use? Now, Wondershare Filmora is by no doubt a beginner editing software. No one who knows anything about video will simply say, oh, Filmora, hands down, easier and better than Premiere. No, 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 no. It is, at best, in the same category as Premiere. When you search video editor, there's a couple things that pop up. Uh, Adobe Premiere, Adobe, and Wondershare. And then a bunch of other stupid Instagram editors and stuff like that. So, um, it is at best in the same class as Premiere, but it is no way a replacement for Premiere or a substitute for Premiere. It is just easier to use, cheaper to run, and that's it. That's really all it is. Now, why is it easier to use? Because there's no fancy gadgets about it, okay? So what you get with Premiere is you get a lot of things all at once. So. Your Premiere, when you first open it up, there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of things. Filmora is very easy to use. It, it's pretty much plug and play. You buy it, you install it, you open it up, and you can start editing right away, and it's not going to take you 12 hours to edit two minutes of video. Whereas Premiere, it is very confusing if you've never edited anything uh, in terms of video. It's going to be very confusing for you to learn Premiere. Very, very confusing. So, take that and just do it as you will. Premiere, kind of expensive, hard to use. Filmora, cheap, easy to use. Now let's move on to the actual things that I care about. No shortcuts in Filmora. That's right. Uh, what are shortcuts, Dan, and why do I need them? I have a mouse. I can use my mouse. Just to tell you how handy shortcuts are in my line of work, I edit on a Mac at work. And we have the Apple mouses, the, like, the Bluetooth Apple mouses that like never run out of battery. But when they do run out of battery, they're very inconvenient because the charging port is right underneath the mouse, so you can't use the mouse while it's charging. <laughs> Let me just tell you, I've gone straight 20 minutes, 20 minutes while my mouse charged, I was still editing because of shortcuts. If I was editing on Filmora, I would have not been doing anything in those 20 minutes. Nothing. I would have been literally sitting like this while my mouse charged. That's it. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to zoom out of the track without the mouse. And, you know, here, zoom in, zoom out. You know, want to write something? I'll just write something. Now, there is a little bit of the mouse involved with this, I mean, if you want to move a clip somewhere, you want to select where you want the text to go, you need to you need to use the mouse. But if you're literally just going through and trimming the fat off of footage, which which in my line of work I do a lot, you can literally go 20 to 30 minutes without touching the mouse. I guarantee it. And that's why I love shortcuts. And that's why I love Adobe Premiere. Alright, next up. We're flying through these, I promise. Preset texts. Uh, that's something that Premiere just doesn't do. That's right. You just press the text tool, select where you want the text to be, and you write your text. Select the font, select the size. That's about it. It's like Word. For Mora, though, it's a little bit different. They actually have these preset, uh, like, templates. So all you have to do is replace the uh, sample text with your text and it has an animation and all that stuff and it looks really good. My uh, my Overtake Media logo, this one right here, um, that was made using Filmora and it was very very effortless. I just took one of the elements which was the gear head and I took another element which was the play button I put it inside the gear head and then I got a preset text, replaced the sample text with Overtake Media and the other one with uh, my at you know, at overtake.media for my Instagram. 
And that's it. All the animation, everything, just... It was already done for me. I didn't have to really do anything. It took me about five minutes to make that logo. Because I had it in my head and I was like, I can do it with this. Here's why Premiere isn't good at doing text. Because Premiere is for video, it's for assembly, it's for color editing, it's for like these really cinematic videos, like wedding videos, and, and car videos, and music videos. Now when you get Premiere, like I said before, you also get a bunch of other Adobe products as well. So if you really wanted to do some really awesome animated text stuff, you could just throw it in After Effects, you could have it track. Um, the text, so like that's something that Connor does at work all the time with our uh, wedding videos, is like he, he tracks the text, so like with a nice, like uh, a pan, the text follows with the pan too, it's really cool. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but it, it's really awesome. So if you really wanted to go all out with that stuff, if you have Premiere, just use After Effects, because you also have After Effects if you have Premiere. With Filmora, Filmora is trying to kind of take a bunch of different Adobe apps and combine them all into one for like one really small price. And I don't think that's working out too well for them. I don't know. Um, if I ever, I don't know. I know that when I needed a good um, credit, like when the, you know at the end of the movie when the credits roll, I exported my project out of Premiere, threw it into Filmora, and it was very seamless, yes. but. You know, that's because I had Filmora. If I didn't, I would just throw it into After Effects and just do it. So, yeah. Text is something I have to get to Filmora because they do it very well, but it isn't everything. It is getting really dark outside. Holy crap. One track mind. What this means is Filmora is kind of built to be a one track thing. I think, to be honest with you, uh, Filmora is appealing to the vlogging genre because most vloggers, myself included, just need one track to make a vlog. Okay, you just string all your footage pretty much in chronological order. You only need one track. However, I'm currently working on a project that has five camera angles. One, two, three, four, five camera angles. Five visuals, five audio, uh, no, no, seven audios. It's quite a lot of data, and uh, you're not going to be able to do that with one track. Now, Filmora does have the ability to add tracks as you go along, but if you have, if you have that much, Filmora is gonna crash. I promise you this. Filmora crashes when you do the green screen stuff, or when you do split screen stuff. So imagine if you have five camera angles and two audio uh, recordings. It, it's gonna crash like crazy, and there is no synchronize on Filmora, so no, I would never ever ever imagine doing something that gigantic on a software like Filmora. So, so if you're looking into doing that kind of stuff, like filming events and editing them, even if it's just two camera angles, Premiere is going to do it much better than Filmora because you can sync things up, there's multiple tracks, it's not going to crash with that much data. And, uh, and you're going to be able to, to manage all that really, really good um, because you can, yeah. Alright, uh, getting, getting closer to the end here. <clears throat> Group projects. Now this is something that Premiere has in beta phase still, but I've used it at work um, when we had a wedding that had to get out the door as soon as possible. Um, and... Uh, it, one person editing it wasn't going to be enough. We needed multiple people editing it. It is still in beta phase and you have to pay more for it. But if you are going to be working on major, major projects that need to be done fairly quickly, it might be a good idea to invest in group projects. Now this is completely uh, alienizing Filmora because Filmora does not have anything like this. Not even in beta. If you think about getting Premiere, that's something that Adobe is currently testing, and it's it's really good so far. Um, it's not like Google though; it's not like live. You need to save it for the other person working on it to see it, and uh, so it is a little bit, a little bit wonky. But again, beta phase. Now uh, let's talk about um, the way that things are spread out here. For Filmora, it isn't just for video editing. Okay, so it's it's a little bit for. Um, slideshow I guess you could say. You could put pictures in it and make a slideshow and I guess you could do that with uh, Premiere but it's not really what it's built for. Like I said my logo 
um, for Overtake Media, edited in um, Filmora. And uh, that's something I can't see doing in Premiere. So that's something that really kind of, sort of, is something that I, I enjoy from Filmora because you can do more than just video with it. But again, if you have Premiere, you also have, you know, uh, After Effects and stuff like that. So um, it's just a matter of, of having um, a different program for different uh, jobs, I guess you can say. Filmora, not just for video, you can do you can do a little bit of multiple jobs with it. With Adobe, you're going to need different programs for different things. And I like the way Adobe does it because each program is built for a specific purpose. Versus Filmora, they try to pack everything into one software. It doesn't work as well as it, as it could be. Okay, so it is pretty dark out right now. It is not supposed to be this dark out right now. I'm going gonna, gonna to wrap this up. Uh... My opinion, if you're just starting out, get Filmora. What's, what do you got to lose? It's, it's $40 for a year. Um, I highly recommend getting that deal because if you're like me and you edit every single day, you will get really good at video in general. You'll be able to transfer to Premiere fairly seamlessly with a good teacher like I had. However, if you have some experience with video editing, maybe you've uh, been um, on Final Cut and then you changed to a PC and now you can't do Final Cut, just get, get Premiere. I don't understand why you would make that decision so hard on yourself. Just get, get Premiere. <laughs> it is super dark. I apologize. Why is it so dark? It is gonna, it's about to downpour. It is about to freaking downpour. This video idea came to me when someone asked me to teach them uh, the newest version of iMovie and I said, uh, I don't know iMovie. And they said, what do you mean, I thought you were a video editor. I'm like, no, nah, I use Adobe Premiere. And they're like, what's that? Adobe Premiere, greatest editor ever. Filmora, it's probably the greatest uh, off-brand ever.